Hello and welcome to a follow-up slash retrospective of sorts. I wanted to do this video as a endpoint for sort of the finale of part one. Uh, it was always, it became a goal with that game to finish prior to part two release. At least I don't think I originally thought I could do it at first just because uh, I had fallen behind and until it got delayed I was like I'm never gonna make it and then I sort of busted over a weekend to get it all recorded prior to release that week but I now that the full playthrough is up I wanted to do a follow-up up in a way of looking back on part two now that the full playthrough is up and now that I've also marinated on part two for nearly a year because I played it on release of course and once left underwhelmed in some ways um I don't think it's hard to say that there was a lot of controversy about the game but I definitely I enjoyed it to an extent I'm not gonna say I hate the game it was I rated probably 7 out of 10 I enjoyed the gameplay because I enjoyed one's gameplay and I think it was more of that for the most part with some new mechanics and some new features but for the most part it was like playing one again except for a new story and that's where a lot of my issues fall into. The gameplay itself is fine. Dogs are the hardest thing to deal with. But the gameplay was fun. I enjoyed playing the game. The story it told was where I took issue and where some people also took issue. So now that I got sort of the broad areas out of the way, I do want to go into some specifics. And I think the first specific just to chop it off the block is Joel's death so Joel's death was something I saw coming from the moment they announced it as Ellie's revenge story I know that comes as a shock to some people but it kind of was projected the moment they said it was Ellie's revenge story yeah. and the only reason I saw it as that it was due to the fact that Joel and Ellie are the two characters returning protagonists from Last of Us Part 1. So, who does not only Ellie care about enough for a revenge story, but the players care enough about a revenge story? I think the only other option most people saw prior to the game release was Dinah. However, that also isn't developed enough either. And it might have been had it Hey, they've been in a relationship for a year now, uh, or longer. Um, however, that's not the case. Um, so Ellie and Dinah's relationship is fairly new in terms of romantic sense. They've definitely had a friendship that we're learning about throughout the course of the game, but that's not much of an option. And so my only other consideration, if it's not going to be Joel, then it has to be all of Jackson. <laughs> Or at least a good majority of it that sends Ellie and Joel potentially on a hunt either to maybe potentially rescue people who have been kidnapped or revenge for the what was destroyed of their home um, and their loss of a home um, was the only other option I could see working of it not being Joel that Ellie would go on revenge for so so Joel was something I expected to happen. However, how it happens is what I take some issue with, and it only comes from the fact of we have a second protagonist in this game as well. It's not just Ellie's story, it's Abby's story. And Abby's the person who kills Joel. And you know Abby kills Joel. That's my issue. I wish the game omitted that and I wish um when Joel and Tommy have Abby and they escape back to 
where Abby's rest of her Abby's group is. Prior to Joel getting shot, they knock out Tommy. I mean, they, they shoot Joel all to stop them when he tries to stop them from knocking out Tommy, but Tommy's already had knocked out. He doesn't see who shoots. Then you have Ellie who goes down into the area area and finds them and finds Joel all already being in badly. Ellie and Tommy's already knocked out, still knocked out at that point. And so rather than Ellie witnessing that, she's knocked out too. She and Tommy both wake up to find Joel dead after Jesse and Dinah come. The only reason I would prefer that was because even though you play as Abby, prior to playing as Abby, at least through the latter half of the game where she becomes in focus, not the little beginning section, you spent so many hours with Ellie hating Abby, focusing on Abby must die, that to then be thrown into your playing as Abby is kind of rough i don't want to play as a character who my other character who i love hates that was sort of my disconnect for it of i don't want to play as abby for these reasons it was less about joel dying and more of i'm trying to kill abby as ellie and i don't want abby killing ellie like too so that was my rough point and that's why i wish the game lied slightly in those scenes is are more so admitted it or even maybe potentially lied maybe make it look like uh owen when or one of the other characters was the actual target the actual person who killed joel and that way really the focus isn't abby at all but you just know abby was there abby was a part of the group but you don't even run into her until after you potentially gotten revenge against Owen. And then you learn after that, and Abby confesses potentially too, I was the one who did it. And so, and that's what I would have preferred to have been done. Just because it, it leaves us as a player not knowing and not already having as much of a negative connotation towards Abby that there's not as much of a pullback when you're trying to play as Abby. So the game does a lot to develop Abby within her time frame. And frankly, Abby has a section that I like the most because it reminds me most of one because you play at, with her and have her and Lev. And their dynamic is probably one of my favorites in part two. But even then, she was starting at a negative. So, not knowing that she was the tar target of who, who to kill for her revenge saves that up a bit and makes it a little bit higher. Or she still not, might be starting at zero. Right. Oh, but at the same point, it's slightly higher air than it would than it is technically. I mean, than the knowing she killed versus the not knowing. I mean, and that's the only thing I was thinking did. The game lied in trailers to make you think Joel lived. Why not lie in the game to make you not know your second protagonist was the one who killed him? I think that would have improved the game a lot and made it a little bit more narratively uh, less jarring because of that switch. I just mentioned uh, Abby and Lev are one of my favorite dynamics from part two because it does remind me a bit of part one where you have an older and a younger character. But I also think they're one of the dynamics that is around the most in terms of two characters. There's not that much of it in this game and that's another downside for me. I liked part one with Joel and Ellie traveling together. Her. and it's less than I remember but those parts stood out the most to me in playing it. and still are the parts I remember the most just because that's such a 
core aspect of the game is them traveling and growing together. Those dynamics are here. And Ellie's actions, uh, she's with Nina, which is a new romantic relationship. But Nina's not with her 100% of the time. And later on, Jessie shows up. And Jessie shows up for one or two seconds. I can't remember exactly, but it's more of those relationships in some ways don't get the same development in game because Ellie's met with them longer than we've been with them. So that makes it harder to care about Nina and Jesse as much. I don't say I hate their characters, but I just don't know them. Um, and I don't think the time spent with them is enough. Uh, I think Dinah's definitely more developed than Jesse is. Ellie's journey definitely feels more solo despite having the help. That might even be a part of the game's storytelling, but I don't enjoy not having that character dynamic progression. That's sort of why I like Abby and Lev, because Abby and Lev meet in part two. They're starting fresh. They're developing over time and learning about one another. Holding That's sides. another aspect Holding of the storytelling that was more of a downside to me from part one versus part two. It's hard not to compare them because they are very similar games. It's just new story and new characters. Yeah, I don't have too much about two. It's just because it ended up being a very middle of the road game for me. I would still like to see more Last of Us games. I do think Naughty Dog needs to start fresh in terms of new characters, new stories, away from Ellie, Abby, Lev, all of them. Start fresh, and you can even start in a different timeline, timeline of sorts of start with different characters. There's, um, and their beginning on Outbreak Day, and where they end up. There are different things that can be done without having to rely on them. You can allude to them, but without relying on them. So that's really all I have to say about it. Uh, I don't plan to see any full let's plays of it on this channel, at least currently. I'm gonna try to find something else to play, and something potentially very different. Still haven't figured it out. I do also need to finish Sticker Stones and Fire Emblem. So that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.